to Sundance for first of all uh, selecting this film to play um, and also uh, laying on this amazing festival and stuff. Obviously, we're working really hard to do it. Uh, and also, the Sundance Institute, who put money into this movie at a really crucial point where it didn't look like it was going to happen. So, thank you to them. Uh, also, to CNN Films, uh, who are the majority funders of, uh, of this film, and um, Raw, who are the production company behind it, and, uh, and the production team who are here, here today. Uh, most importantly, thank you to all of you for for turning up um, for this film. Um, you, it really is the world premiere. Uh, no one has, a, a very, very small number of people have seen this. We've never shown it to an audience before. Um, so I'm nervous, but also very excited to see what you think of it. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about the film, but I'll be back later to the, the Q&A, so enjoy. And then uh, David and Bobby. Thank you. Uh, can you just give us a, uh, any sort of update since the end of the film? What you may be seen in the papers or anything like that? Has there been anything interesting? Any update? His question was if they can give any updates from what has happened since the movie. Um, I'm not blocking very far. So um, the, the, the papers have been really uh, about 10,000 10, page, pages, 10,500 pages have, have been released. Um, it's only uh, the boys' records uh, have been heavily redacted. They're not, they've not been allowed to see um, the actual documents and go and see them. And yeah, they're photocopies with lots of black lines through them. Um, uh, we've only, I mean, if Becky, I should hand over to you in terms of what's in there, but. Not, not very much in terms of, there isn't anything in terms of concrete conclusions or findings from the study? No, uh, no so nothing really conclusive, I don't think. Um, lots of sort of intertwined comparisons about the boys and uh, interviews with their parents and their families, um, minutes, lots of meeting minutes about what this could all possibly mean. So hypotheses, I think, that they were trying to formulate conclusions about what this stuff that wasn't relating to any of the other twins, so there was no sort of overarching, inclusive anything, really. Yeah, so if, yeah I'll pass over to you guys and just say, but basically it's just a, a lot of scientists sitting around in a room 20 years on trying to work out if there was anything in their study and discussion, but no formal conclusion. It hasn't been written up as a, as a study. <coughs> well, that, that's the point, is that, you know, was, what was this all for? Yeah. I mean, there, there was no published study. Um, some of the data we looked at, um, I mean, it, it's recognizable, it's legible, it's disturbing to see that somebody else has had your third grade report card in a file for, you know, for Your third grade years. report card. You know, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, but, you know, but actually, they, they actually all work kind of similar. You know, Bobby, David, Eddie, uh, is a very bright child, but does not work up to his potential, you know, um, and that was, that was a common thread. Um, what I found interesting and, and um, uh, the Larry, the, the last guy that appeared uh, in the film, the psychologist, um, uh, sort of um, talked about, you know, parenting, and I found that some of the notes that they made uh, or uh, like blame the parents, you know. If there's something wrong with the kid, blame the parents, and uh, that that was that was a little bit disturbing. Um, uh, you know, that particular um, uh, part of it, I kind of read into a little bit differently. More that they, um, as professional people, saw that there were areas in parenting that may have been lacking. Uh, more importantly, uh, a child that needed specific attention. And as professionals, they held back that information, and I think they really cheated our parents mm. and did all of us a great disservice. You guys, um, 
I know you've probably seen the movie prior to today, but this is probably the first time you saw it in front of a crowd of people. Um, and I know I thank you up for sharing your lives and your family sharing your lives with us. But what was it like to watch this in front of all these people? <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> that was really intense. You know, just, yeah. um, but um, you know, we just uh, uh, we think the world and all the people that were involved in this project. We didn't want somebody to exploit our story. We didn't want somebody to exploit us. We didn't want somebody to tell it their way. And what Tim and Becky and all the other people that were involved did was they really got us as us. They really got the truth as we see it and what we felt as we lived it. And um, I guess maybe now, um, an hour and a half later, you understand why this film was introduced in this way. I, I've seen documentaries where I've learned things that were kind of disturbing or happy or sad, but I've never been taken on such an emotional roller coaster. I don't know how you feel about it. <laughs> it, it, was, um, it was tough to watch. Um, but as hard as it was to watch, um, I think they did an unbelievable job of bringing Eddie, um, his member really, back with us. And it, it, as tough as it was, it was just beautifully done. And thank you for that. The question was, um, what are you hoping will come out of this film as a result and, you know, from the publicity that surrounds it, what, what do you want to happen? Microphones all over the place. Um, well, I think that it's very important that it brought to light just what happened and how tragic it was. Uh, I do hope that, um, that the board does the right thing and, and reunites any twins that may be out there that, that don't know about it. Um, and I think that they, they owe some sort of retribution to those of us that were separated and they referred to us as participants. We weren't participants. <laughs> We were victims. It's worth mentioning that I think the really important detail of all this is that ne neither of the boys, and as far as I know, none of the people in the study have ever received any kind of apology from anyone um, in any way, shape, or form, even if, you know, sorry about that, guys, you know, nothing. Yeah. How were the dynamics with your sisters changed as a result of uh, you discovering each other? The question was, how did the dynamics with your sisters change since you discovered each other? You know what? I, I think it wasn't so much the change in the dynamics of the relationships with the sisters as it was the sisters were the control group. Yeah. That was it. Let's just take three genetically dissimilar children, about three years older, and place them in this home. Now we've studied them, we know these homes, we visited these homes. Now we've got the control group. Let's put the experimental group in. Now let's put the genetically identical boys in these homes. And we'll look at the girls, you know, but let's see what happens. So that's, that's what the purpose was. I mean, was. This was really well thought out. And I don't want to say, well, it's fine for me to say whatever I want, right? Yes. <laughs> that's an evil scheme. Like, you know, this was not something that was not well thought out. So, um, you know, we have relationships with our sisters, and, and, and I have a little brother, um, uh, named Joel, he's not so little anymore. Um, and uh, something we were talking about today was, you know, he was a little afraid, you know, when, when we met. That, like, he, was, he was a little bit afraid, you know, when we met, that like, he was going to lose, you know, me too. I found my brother. But David and Eddie scooped him up with like so much love. He just became a kid. And we just took him with his head. So the I'm sorry, just to, to, to a little bit. The dynamics initially, um, it was kind of a cross pollination of family. It was dad, 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 mom, mom, mom. It was you know, sister, 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 brother, brother. Oh, yeah, my brother. I mean, it was just a, a, a kind of cross pollination. I think over the years, um, things kind of settle back to normalcy in terms of dynamics of play, sibling to sibling, if that's a clearer answer. 
Yeah, but, but like our weddings were family only. No, so that's a clear answer. answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was I was working in development of Raw, the production company, which made this documentary. Also made other great films like The Imposter, which was on the Sundance a few years back. Uh, I was working in development, and my my job was to cut, you know come up with new ideas and pitch them out for other people to direct. And uh, a really brilliant producer called Grace Hughes Hallett uh, brought the story in. She'd been working uh, on a previous film about adoption and was quite interested. Had done some reading around the subject and come across the boy's story, so she brought it in. But it's then taken well, it's for almost five years to the day since she, uh, she brought the idea in, so it took a long time. And, uh, and it, in the four years it took to get off the ground, I, I also direct some stuff, and I, and I was just like, this is the greatest, greatest story I've ever come across, human story, in any, in any way. and um, I just had to, had to make it. Um, I mean, tell me, uh, uh, just time for two more questions, but before, before we do, I, I want to say something to these guys, because uh, this story is interesting for me because uh, I was living in New York City at the time. I just graduated from college in 1980 and read about you guys constantly in all the papers and, <laughs> and wanted to go to your restaurant, wanted to go, I like, wanted to go, I, I was just too uncool to ever even <laughs> have to be part of that, that whole groovy scene, but uh, I so when I saw this movie, it was like, Holy shit, I was telling all the other the program all about that experience. It was, uh, cool. I'd like to know, I know, we all know you were in the restaurant business. I'd like to know what kind of business you ended up going into, each of you. And I'd like to know how old um, Eddie was when we, when we lost him. Okay, her question was, they had a restaurant, they had different businesses after the restaurant. She wants to know what businesses they went into. Uh, and she also asked about Eddie, how old he was when he passed away? Yes. Okay. Eddie had reached his 34th birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I left the restaurant, I went on to law school, and I'm an attorney. And David, you did a bunch of stuff. <laughs> well, I, I went on uh, to run the restaurant for another five years, um, which was quite a challenge. When the cabbie said triplets, and it's all me. And then I went on to do a few things, and at this point, um, uh, I'm an insurance consultant specializing in senior products and innovations. Yeah.